Okay, so as part of my lecture series for differential calculus, here is a video on the derivatives of hyperbolic functions. And if you are following my channel, in one of my videos, I presented some properties of hyperbolic functions. And to recall, hyperbolic functions are functions possessing similar properties with that of the six trigonometric functions. And these functions were taken from an equilateral hyperbola. And the six hyperbolic functions are the hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, hyperbolic tangent, hyperbolic cotangent, hyperbolic secant, and hyperbolic cosecant. And to exponentially speaking, the hyperbolic sign is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. Hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. Hyperbolic uh, cosecant of x is just equal to the reciprocal of hyperbolic sine, which is equal to 2, all over e to the x minus e to the negative x. And hyperbolic secant is also equal to the reciprocal of hyperbolic cosine, and that is equal to 2 all over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Similarly, hyperbolic tangent is just equal to hyperbolic sine of x or all over hyperbolic cosine of x, which is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x all over e to the x plus e to the negative x. And hyperbolic cotangent is equal to hyperbolic cosine all over hyperbolic sine, and that is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x all over e to the x minus e to the negative x. And for their derivatives, I'll start with the derivative of hyperbolic sine. And the derivative of sine h of x is equal to the derivative of e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. And then using the, prop, the derivatives of exponential function, you know that the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the negative x. And the derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. And therefore, we shall have e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. And looking at this uh, expression, this e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2 is in fact your cosine h of x. And therefore, we can now say that the derivative of sine h x is equal to cosine h x. And generally speaking, the derivative of sine h u is equal to cosine h u times du dx. Okay, applying the same procedure, we can show that the derivative of cosine h x is also equal to the derivative of e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. And then differentiating this exponentially, so we shall have e to the x and the derivative of e to the negative x is e to minus negative e to the negative x. Sorry, that's e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. And again, this expression is just equal to your sine h of x. So therefore, the derivative of cosine h of x is equal to sine h of x. And in general, the derivative of cosine h u is equal to sine h u times du dx. All right, so for the derivative of secant h x, we shall differentiate 2 all over e to the x plus e to the negative x. And since this is written as quotient, then we might apply the quotient rule, v du minus u dv all over v squared. So we shall have, okay, you just copy e to the x plus e to the negative x and then raise it uh, to the second power. You just write it on the denominator and then you copy it here, e to the x plus e to the negative x times derivative of two, which is zero, then minus the numerator, that's two, times the derivative of the denominator, which is e to the x minus e to the negative x. And you can now see that this e to the x plus e to the negative x times 0 is equal to 0. Then we can write this simply as negative 2 times e to the x minus e to the negative x all over the quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x square. And then this fraction can be written as product of negative 2 all over e to the x plus e to the negative x times e to the x minus e to the negative x all over e to the x plus e to the negative x. And we can uh, still recall that 2 over e to the x plus e to the negative x is your cosine h of x and that this e to the x minus e to the negative x all over e to the x plus e to the negative x is your tangent h of x. So we shall have the derivative of secant h x is negative secant hx tangent hx. So in general, we can say that the derivative of secant hu is negative secant hu tangent hu times du dx. And then for the derivative of cosecant hx, okay, we know that the derivative, uh, we know that cosecant hx is 2 over e to the x minus e to the negative x. But this time, I'll be using its reciprocal identity 
which is 1 over sine h of x. And I'll be differentiating this 1 over sine h of x. Okay? Uh -huh. By using the derivative of quotient, we shall have sine hx, the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, that's the derivative of 1, that's 0, minus the numerator, that's 1, times the derivative of the denominator, which is cosine h of x, and all over the square of the denominator, which is sine hx square. And then we know that this is equal to 0, okay? So we shall now have negative 1 times cosine hx all over sine h square. And then we can write this as product of two uh, fraction such as negative 1 over sine hx times cosine hx over sine hx. And again, this is your uh, hyperbolic cosecant h of x and this is your hyperbolic cotangent of uh, x. And then... Therefore, the derivative of cosecant hx is negative cosecant hx times cotangent hx, which give us the general formula for the derivative of cosecant hu, which is equal to negative cosecant hu times cotangent hu times du dx. Okay, for the derivative of tangent hx, we shall be differentiating e to the x minus e to the negative x all over e to the x plus e to the negative x. And then by quotient rule, okay, so you just copy first the denominator e to the x plus e to the negative x raised e to the second power. And then this is your v, that's the denominator e to the x plus e to the negative x times the derivative of the numerator, so derivative of e to the x is e to the x, then derivative of negative e to the negative x is positive e to the negative x. So that's e to the x plus e to the negative x minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. So we shall have here e to the x minus e to the negative x. So what are we going to do next is we just multiply, uh, we just simplify the numerator by multiplying this and this two uh, functions. So we shall have for the first term, that's e to the 2x, that's e to the x times e to the x, and then e to the x times e to the negative x is e to the 0, and that is 1. And then another one here is e to the negative x times e to the neg e to the x, sorry, it's e to the zero, that's another one. And then e to the negative x times e to the negative x is e to the negative 2x. So we shall have for, for the product of this function is e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x. Okay, and then minus, you do the same here. That's e to the x times e to the x. That's e to the 2x, okay? And then e to the x times negative e to the negative x is negative e to the 0. And that is, e, that is negative 1, okay? And then negative e to the negative x times e to the x is another negative e to the 0. And that is also equal to negative 1. So we have here negative 2. And then negative e to the negative x times negative e to the negative x is positive e to the 2x. So we shall have, <clears throat> okay, e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x minus e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x. Simplifying this, we know that this can become 0. Also, this e to the negative x and this minus e to the negative 2x. And then we only left to with this is minus negative 2. That will become positive 2. Added to 2, we shall have 4 all over the quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x squared. And this can be written exponentially as 2, the quantity 2, all over e to the x plus e to the negative x, then square. And we know that this 2 over e to the x plus e to the negative x is our hyperbolic secant of x. So we shall have the derivative of tangent hx is secant h squared x. So in general, the derivative of tangent hu is secant h squared u times du dx. And which can be seen that the derivative of cotangent hu equals negative cosecant h squared u times du dx. And for some examples, okay, so now if you uh, already know the derivative of the six trigonometric functions, and then you can easily recall 
the derivative of this hyperbolic functions only then that the minus sign is uh, given to the derivatives of the reciprocal function such as cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Okay, so for some example, let's say we have sine h 5x. So we know that our u is represented by 5x. Okay, so we shall have derivative of sine is cosine, then you copy 5x, and then you differentiate 5x. And then we know that the derivative of this 5x is 5. So what you're going to do is you just write this in front. So we shall have 5 cosine h 5x. And then another one, say we wish to differentiate cosine h x squared. And you get the derivative of x squared, and that is equal to 2x. And then you just write it in front, okay? And then you get the derivative of cosine h and that is sine h, and then you affix x squared. So we shall have 2x times sine h x squared. Okay. Another one, say we wish to find the derivative of secant h 3x squared. And you know that the secant h is a reciprocal uh, function, so we you, you affix the minus sign. So that is negative okay 6x secant h 3x squared tangent h 3x squared we're in the 6x is the derivative of 3x squared and then you just write it in front okay another one <clears throat> say we wish to find the derivative of cotangent h square root of x you know that the derivative of square root of x okay is equal to uh, that's just that is just equal to x raised to one half so that's one half x raised to negative one half or 1 over 2 square root of x, okay? So it shall have negative cosecant h square, square root of x times derivative of square root of x. And again, this is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x. So you just write this in front. So we shall have negative 1 over 2 square root of x times cosecant h squared, square root of x. All right, so we wish to find the derivative of tangent h of x squared minus 3x plus 1. Then the derivative of x squared minus 3x plus 1 is 2x minus 3. Okay, just write it in front. And then you affix secant h squared, then copy x squared minus 3x plus 1. And that's the derivative of tangent h x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, so we have here <clears throat> the derivative of cosecant h1 over x. So we'll have, this is cosecant, so you affix the minus sign. So that's negative cosecant h1 over x, cotangent h1 over x times the derivative of 1 over x. And you know that the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Then you multiply it with negative 1. So you shall have 1 over x squared, cosecant h1 over x, cotangent h1 over x. Okay, so if you're following my Okay, so in one of my videos, I featured ways and techniques on how to find the derivatives of powers of trigonometric functions. So you can also apply that same principle, that same techniques in differentiating powers of hyperbolic functions. Say we wish to find the derivative of sine h to the n of u, and that is equal to n times du dx times sine, sine h of u raised to n minus 1, and then you just simply affix cosine h of u for the derivative of power of hyperbolic cosine of u. And then that is equal to n times du dx. Then you just copy cosine h of u and then you raise it to n minus 1. And then you simply affix sine h of u. As an example, say we wish to find the derivative of sine h raised to 4 of 5x. And here, I'll be applying first the chain rule and then later on, I'll be applying the formula. So by applying the chain rule, so you copy 4. You write it in front, okay? And then you simply affix sine h 5x, and then you, you raise it to a power equal to 3, okay? And then you simply affix the derivative of sine h of 5x. And you know that the derivative of sine h 5x is 5 cosine h 5x. So we shall have 4 sine h cubed 5x times 5 cosine h 5x. Then simplifying, you multiply 4 and 5, and that will give you 20 sine h cubed 5x times cosine h 5x. Then by applying the formula, you can see here that n is equal to 4 times derivative of 5x, and that is 5. And then you just simply copy sine h 5x, raise it to power equal to 3, since 4 minus 1 is 3. And then you just simply affix cosine h of 5x. And then 
Multiplying 4 and 5, you get 20. Then sine h cube 5x and then cosine h of 5x. Okay. <clears throat> so if we wish to find the dy dx, if y equals cosine h raised to 4 third of 2x cubed minus 1. And then applying this formula, you see that n is equal to 4 thirds. And then you multiply it to the derivative of 2x cubed minus 1. And that is 6x squared. And then you copy cosine h. 2x cubed minus 1, and then you subtract 1 from 4 thirds, and that's 1 third. And then you just simply affix sine h of 2x cubed minus 1. So we shall have 4 third times 6x squared. That is 8x squared times cosine h raised to 1 third of 2x cubed minus 1, and then times sine h of 2x cubed minus 1. Say for the derivative of powers of tangent, hyperbolic tangent h, uh, of u and uh, applying the same principle, okay, you copy n, then you differentiate your u, and then you copy tangent h u, you raise it to n minus 1, and then you just simply affix secant h squared of u. Okay, for example, say we wish to find dy dx if y equals tangent h to the 5 of 2 third x, okay, and then by applying the principle, you, ca you, you see that n is equal to 5, and then you differentiate 2 third x and that's 2 third. Okay, so that's why we have here 10 third. That's 5 times 2 third. And then you copy tangent h 2 third x. And then you subtract 1 from 5. So that is equal to 4. And then you just simply affix secant h square of 2 third x. So we shall have tangent h to the fourth 2 third x. Then secant h square 2 third of x. For the derivative of powers of hyperbolic cotangent of u, so that's derivative of cotangent h to the n of u, since the derivative of cotangent h of u is negative cos secant h u cotangent of h u, then we should just simply start with negative 1 times n times du dx times cotangent h uh, of u raised to n minus 1 times cosine cosecant h squared of u. Say we wish to find dy dx if y equals cotangent h cubed of 4x cubed. By applying the formula, you see here that n is equal to 3, okay? And then you differentiate 4x cubed and that's 12x squared, okay? And then you copy cotangent h, you subtract 1 from 3 and that will become 2. You copy 4x cubed and then you just simply affix cos secant h squared 4x cubed, and then you affix the minus sign in front. So simplifying, dy dx equals negative 3 times 12x squared is negative 36x squared. And then we have here cotangent h squared 4x cubed, and then affix cosecant h squared 4x cubed. Okay, for the power of hyperbolic secant, okay, that's secant h to the n of u, that's negative n times du dx times secant h to the n of u, times tangent h of u, okay? Say we have here y equals secant h to the 5, 3x, and then we wish to find dy dx. Okay, applying the chain rule, okay, you copy 5, write it in front, then copy secant h, 3x, then you subtract 1 from 5, and that will become 4. And then you differentiate secant h, 3x, and you know that the derivative of secant h, 3x is negative 3, secant h 3x tangent h 3x. So we shall have 5 secant h to the 4 3x times negative 3 secant h 3x tangent h 3x. And then simplifying, you'll have negative 15 secant h to the 5 3x times tangent h of 3x. Then applying the formula, okay, you start with negative 1 times n, which is equal to 5 times derivative of 3x, that's 3, and then you just copy this again, secant h to the 5, 3x, and then you simply affix tangent h, 3x. So that's negative 15, that's negative 5 times 3, that's negative 15, secant h to the 5, 3x, tangent h, 3x. Then for the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant h to the n of u, then that is equal to negative n times du dx, times cosecant h to the n of u times cotangent h of u. Say we have y equals cosecant h to the 4, 3x squared, and we wish to find dy dx. And then by applying the formula, you start with negative 1 
3a times n, which is equal to 4, times the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x, okay? And then you just copy it up again, cosecant h to the 4, 3x squared, and then you affix cotangent h, 3x squared. So that's negative 4 times 6x, that's negative 24x, cosecant h to the 4, 3x squared, cotangent h, 3x squared. Okay, and then for the higher order derivatives, I'll start with y equals sine hx, and I know that the derivative of this is cosine hx. And then getting the, the second derivative will lead me to sine hx, and you will observe that the second derivative go back to the original function sine hx, which I can now say that the second derivative of y over, with respect to x, sorry, is equal to y, and that is sine hx. And then... The third derivative of y with respect to x is just equal to the first derivative of y in terms of x, and that is equal to cosine h of x. And then the sequence of or the higher order derivatives goes on and on. This is now equal to the fourth derivative of y in terms of x, equal to the second derivative of y in terms of x, which is equal to the function itself, which is sine h x. And then the fifth derivative is equal to the third derivative, which is equal to the first derivative, which in turn we can now say that. The k derivative of y with respect to x is equal to sine hx whenever k is even, and that the k derivative of y with respect to x is equal to cosine hx whenever k is odd. So to make this generalize, okay, we wish to find the k derivative of c times sine h a x, and that is equal to c times a to the k times sine h a x if k is even. And c times a to the k times cosine h a x if k is odd. <clears throat> okay, so we wish to find the 97th derivative of y in terms of x if y equals sine h x. Looking at the order, that's 97 and that is odd. So we say that the, the 97th derivative of y in terms of x is just simply equal to cosine, uh, uh, cosine h of x. Another one. Say we wish to find the 100th derivative of y with respect to x if y equals one third sine h to x. So this, since this is even, then we will use this uh, structure. Okay, so that's c. That's one third. One third times a to the k, where a is two, so two raised to one hundred, and then copy sine h to x, and then we shall have. The 100th derivative of y in terms of x is 1 half times 2 raised to 100, 100 sine h of 2x. And then for the higher order derivatives of hyperbolic cosine, okay, so we, we have y equals cosine h of x, and then dy dx is sine h of x. And then the second derivative now go back to the original function, cosine h of x, so as the third derivative is equal to the first derivative. And so... We can say that the fourth derivative is also equal to the second derivative, so as the fifth derivative is equal to the third derivative, which is also equal to the first derivative. And going on and on, so we, can, we say that the kth derivative of y with respect to x is equal to cosine h of x if k is even, and that will become sine h of x if k is odd. And again, to make this generalize, so we wish to find the kth derivative of c times cosine h ax and that is c times a to the k times cosine h h ax if k is even and c times a to the k times sine h ax if k is odd. As an example, say we wish to find the 51st derivative of y with respect to x if y equals 3 cosine h 2 pip x. And then since this is odd, so we might use this structure. So you copy 3, that's c, 3. And then a to the k, so that's 2 pip, where k is 51. And then you copy sine h 2 pip of x. So we shall have 3 times 2 over 5 raised to 51st power times sine h of 2 over 5 of x. 